Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. Matthew McGregor is an international speaker, best-selling author, coach, and trainer. Matthew is the founder of 22 Apps, a software platform that allows anyone to create and design their own personalized mobile app for iPhone or Android. This app enables marketers to engage more people and market to an even larger audience. Uh, attendees, if you have any questions, please type them into the chat. And periodically during Matthew's presentation, I will interrupt him and pose all your questions. Matthew, she's all yours, take it away. Awesome, <laughs> thank you, Roger. <laughs> And um, uh, this has been such a such a wonderful evening so far. So um, so thank you so much for for having me here and uh, uh, again for you know hosting these events. Um, absolutely fantastic every time. So um, uh, what I'm here today to talk about, as it obviously says on screen, is the world of mobile apps. Though um, really, after being involved in the personal development and business sort of industry space. Um, for the last several years, I've been helping people to get online with their marketing, uh, with their funnels and websites and webinars and, you know, their digital campaigns to reach a bigger art audience online. Um, what I found with mobile apps is, is that I'm really excited and passionate about to be able to share today that mobile apps aren't just another website. They're not just, you know, something you put out there that doesn't really attract clients into your business or your organization. Um, mobile apps can be, if you choose to use them uh, effectively, can be designed to lead customers into your business and then uh, obviously into choosing to work with you. Um, so I'm um, very excited for you to be here. And uh, as, as Roger said, any questions, please let me know in the chat. Um, happy to answer those as we go along. So um, let's just jump right into things. Um, uh, again, like I mentioned, no matter what business you're in, uh, whether it's, you know, you're an author, speaker, coach, transformation leader, um, any sort of business owner, entrepreneur, um, health and wellness relationships, it, you'll see that what I'm about to talk about with regards to mobile apps really applies to all industries and all niches as a whole. And so the first question I always love to answer here is, um, I like to answer, why have I chosen after all these years of actually building mailing lists and working in the digital marketing space, um, why have I now put all my energy and attention <laughs> on the mobile app field? Um, because here's the thing is uh, back when I, started after having success with uh, actually a video production business. Um, it was called Film It Right, where we made a video for small companies and entrepreneurs. Uh, after that, I started my first larger business called the Client Conversion Formula. And uh, it's kind of like this internet marketing sort of based um, online company that helps messengers to make that big leap into the world of emails and social media and advertising and funnels and, and all this kind of stuff. Um, as I mentioned, it's the, the idea is basically to help them take their businesses online and grow it well into making multiple six figures a year. So um, the reason that I believe that this business, the, the client conversion form of the, the marketing funnel business um, was so successful is that most people have no idea how online marketing works. And it, it's certainly not like it used to be either, right? Um, see, back in what you would consider like the glory days, the glory days of email marketing. Man, you could send out an email and you'd get like a 50, 60, 70% open rate. You'd get, you'd get like a 30, 40% click. It, it was beautiful. Like it was the most amazing thing in the world. And especially if you had like a list of 100,000 people, you'd literally be sitting on a mountain of cash. <laughs> and of course, that's dramatically changed because everyone started doing it. And now everybody's got like 10 billion emails in their email account. Um, and so, Really what this actually led to, um, both for myself and a handful of my clients, is really losing passion for our businesses. Um, maybe you can relate to this as a messenger, 
right? Is, is when you're forced to do so many unnecessary extra tasks, like, like figuring out the social media, um, writing and sending emails, creating the ads, all these things, you really aren't as connected to your work anymore. Um, and, uh, you know, can often feel frustrating, um, maybe even a little overwhelming. And see, here's the thing, like it wouldn't be so bad it, it, it wouldn't be so bad if it led to a large number of people signing up, right? Um, but when you look at where email marketing is at now, uh, when you build a list and you spend a lot of time, you spend a lot of money, um, you know, putting together all the elements that grow the list, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're connecting with that many people. The reality of email marketing is even if you've got a fresh list, when you email that list and you know you want to engage them in your world or whatever you're doing or offering, um, you're going to see low engagement results. And uh, what I mean by this is that some of the best internet marketers in the world, um, who I have the privilege of knowing, right, when they send out an email, um, uh, they using professional copywriters and they actually hire people to write the emails for them. Um, they're actually lucky and they're happy. <laughs> they're happy to get like a five to 10% engagement. Um, we've got, we've got some feedback going on. Whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> um, uh, and you know, um, five to 10% engagement, uh, of course, uh, the reason for this is you might send all, all, all the emails and you're hoping to get like, you know, 50, 60, 7% response. And the reason that doesn't happen is because of spam filters, promotion filters, uh, fake email addresses, all these things. And um, it's, it's just not the kind of results I particularly enjoy spending my time on generating. Um, and so uh, the other option is social media, right? And um, uh, especially with Facebook being the biggest social media marketing platform of all of them all, um, building up a big outreach on social media used to mean, used to mean that when, you know, uh, you message something out, um, there'd be a good pet percentage of people actually see it. But see, of course, now Facebook wants you to pay them for those people. So now when you post something for free, like, um, organically, uh, you'll generally notice that under 1% of your audience, which you may have been working so hard to build, is actually going to see it, right? Less than 1%. Um, and, uh, and that used to be much higher, of course. Uh, in fact, on your personal page, um, 25, 30% of your audience used to see your stuff on their wall, on their feed. It was even higher with Instagram. And so it's like, uh, go again. This is another platform which people count on. Uh, they rely on it. They depend on it, right? And um, some people do very, very well with it. Like, I'll give them that. Um, some people do uh, do well with social media, um, but they have to really dedicate a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of, you know, um, energy uh, on social media to, to generate results for their business. And it's just not thing that's great for everyday people. Um, and so uh, even though, uh, of course, my, my client conversion formula business, the webinar funnel building um, side of things that I, I do for people, uh, I help messengers to get online and navigate through all this uh, uncertainty with the low uh, open rates and, you know, the lack of visibility and all this stuff and you know, arrive at success. Um, and even though we've been doing very, very well with that, for the last three or so years, I've been thinking to myself, man, there has to be a better way. There just has to be. <laughs> um, and so uh, from that, I asked myself these, these two questions. Might want to write them down. If you're taking notes, it'd be good to write down. Um, uh, where are people spend their time? How are people engaging in content? Again, obviously on screen, where are people spend their time? How are people engaging in content? And this is when I really start to look at the world of mobile apps, okay? And when I start to look at specifically the statistics around mobile apps, um, it, it really started catching my attention. So let me share a couple with you. So um, in order to have a mobile app on a phone, a person needs to have a smartphone, like, a, like an iPhone, an Android phone, that sort of thing. Um, and by 2021, they're expecting 70% of the world's population are going to be using smartphones. Okay. Now, um, the time that people are actually spending daily on average, actually touching using the device for a variety of different purposes, um, again, is between three to four 
hours a day. And I found that that's on the low end of statistics, which I think is crazy. Um, but here's the cool part is of that time that people are spending in front of them, engaging in whatever, 90% uh, of that time is consumed inside mobile apps. Okay. So a lot of people like to give me the argument, well, why do I need a website when I, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, or why do I need an app rather when I have a website that's mobile optimized, um, meaning that, you know, uh, someone could type in their mobile website address and it'll take them over to the website and it looks good there. And the reason why that's not effective is because people aren't doing that. Only 10% of the time is actually spent with people going to websites and typing it in because there's this whole process that people have to go through to get to your site and, you know, um, they might do it once. They might do it once, which is cool, but it's unlikely that they're going to do it again and again and again and again and check in on a consistent basis every single day or week. Whereas with mobile apps, when somebody downloads a mobile app that they're interested in because of the topic, um, the messenger, whatever it is, uh, that app is taking up what's called physical screen real estate on their phone. Um, like it's there, like it's in front of them. And if it's on their phone 24 seven with your branding and they're going to see it 24 seven, they're gonna often feel inclined to check out what's new, see what they can learn. Um, and it's ultimately gonna lead them deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper in the opportunity to work with you. Okay. Matthew, Matthew a yes. related question from Bobby. Yes. Uh, how to overcome initial resistance to overcome reluctance to download an app when a web alternative works already, for example, Reddit? Good question. So uh, we're going to be actually covering downloads uh, later in about um, uh, 20, 20, 25 minutes. Okay, cool. <laughs> we're going to talk all about getting downloads. Um, awesome. So um, in either case, when I was looking at this kind of stuff, it's like, this is cool. Um, this, is, this is interesting. And in order for all this to make sense, like in order for this to actually make sense, <laughs> then the app needs to be something that they want to go to and want to open up on a consistent basis, which is a little bit a part of getting downloads is they have to want to download it. They have to also want to open it up. Um, and so from that, I want to tell you the difference between two primary different types of apps I found for engagement purposes. Okay. Cause here's the thing you can go out right now and you can get an app done for your business. Um, you'll probably only pay a few hundred bucks to get it done. Woohoo. But, uh, uh, you have to understand the difference between the two primary different types of apps. Okay. So one app is the app you can get done really, really, really quick. And they're generally called static apps. Um, and the apps that I use and the apps we recommend messengers use are, uh, are called dynamic apps. So here's the difference between static and dynamic. So um, a static app is an app that's on the app store that people download and the content within the app doesn't change. Like it's static, like it just stays the same way it is. Um, and so when somebody opens up, um, they can look through it. You know, there might be a video or an article in there, um, whatever it is you have, uh, but it's kind of like having a website that never updates. And then when they're done, that's it, they're done. And so in order for that app to, app to actually um, like change, a, a whole update process needs to be done and it's just tedious. Like you have to resubmit off to Apple, off to Android all over again. It, it, it's just really tedious. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, whereas on the other hand, uh, a dynamic app is an app that connects to a database outside of the, uh, outside of the app. So um, you can think of this like Facebook or Instagram or something like that, where if you want to add a new piece of content to your app, you can do that and you can have it instantly be available in the app for everybody to see. So you can have go in there and you can add a video or, or you can add an article, you can post content, um, that sort of thing. Um, and that means that people have a reason to open up your app once a day or a couple times a week to engage in your message and connect with you and learn from you. And of course, choose to work with you. Okay. So, um, uh, this is one of the things I was looking at, right? Um, it's like, well, uh, static dynamic, static dynamic. Um, definitely want dynamic, obviously, because <laughs> I want people engaging in my message. Um, I want to serve people through my content. Um, and, uh, you know, um, this is where I wanted to really start putting my time and energy as, a uh, as I was seeing. Um, and then I discovered why messengers are not using mobile apps as the platform of choice, even if they're aware of it. Um, the problem is that it's in 
incredibly expensive to develop an app of this kind of caliber. So it's like, um, well, for myself, uh, I want to use a dynamic app that shares content that has membership functionality that, you know, does the courses and, um, uh, you know, anything a website could do, I want my app to do it too. So I found out because I actually went out and I got quotes on an app that I architected out and, you know, designed for myself. Um, and on the low end, it costs thirty thousand dollars to develop, and on the high end, it seventy thousand dollars to develop. And see, even worse than that, Apple and Android are constantly updating their platforms, and so in order to keep up the times, you'll generally spend an extra five thousand dollars a year just maintaining that app. That means uh, new new devices, new software updates, new screen sizes and supporting old devices that start to get a little slower, start to get a little outdated, right? Um, and it's like, well, I can see why. I can see why most messengers are not using this as the platform of choice because if they're going to do it the cheapo way, get a static app, they're, they're going to get the cheapo result and it's not going to work. Um, and if they want an effective app, then they're going to have to spend the tens of thousands of dollars to do it. Um, and so this is where... I had the epiphany. Um, I said, okay, you know, um, let's figure this out. Let's do this. Um, I'm going to jump even deeper into the world of helping just by solving the cost problem, the cost problem in creating some platforms that of course could be used by messengers. And um, uh, of course, without them having to spend the tens of thousands of dollars to do it, uh, we'd create a platform where people could, um, you know, build white label brand replicate and, 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 offer that messenger to be able to create their own app, which is unique to them. Um, and of course, uh, this, I, the idea was to focus entirely on them, uh, where um, you can have all the function of a $50,000 app, but instead of having someone, you know, build it for them, they'd basically just use our platform and we'd basically just give them an un, uh, un, unlimited license to use that platform. Um, Matthew, and, yes. question, can yes, a dynamic ahead. app include interactive sessions like the ones we have with a chat bot? Ah, good question. Um, so in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of just as a whole, yes. Um, uh, and that's a hot, uh, as I'll talk about shortly, that's one of the highly requested features for our own platform, um, which, uh, which, it's a little niche in terms of chatbots, but they're becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. That's why we're considering adding it in, which is cool. Um, and so uh, the idea was, uh, well, we created that platform, uh, which by the way, <laughs> has been a huge task because <laughs> um, we essentially had to create a brand new software that doesn't even exist yet. Um, so what I mean by that is that after doing an enormous amount of work, um, what we found is that how dynamic apps currently work is they give you a pre-fillable template, um, which allow you to insert some video, insert some text, um, maybe link to a page, but you get no control over the, how the app actually looks, feels, and functions. So it's kind of like, a, imagine having your own that literally looks exactly the same as hundreds of other people's apps. Personally, I wouldn't want that, right? And so what we had to do was we actually had to create a brand new system, new engine, new platform, new everything for messengers to actually be able to create their own custom app unique to them. Um, and so uh, in our vision of where we're looking to take this, uh, there's actually 12 steps that we're currently looking to implement with a total cost estimate being somewhere around the thousand dollar mark, uh, all of which I've decided to fully fund on my own, which is very, very, very exciting. Um, and so I want to give you a couple other statistics because uh, I really want you to see and understand why I'm dedicating so much of my personal time, money, and energy on the mobile app field. So um, actually, let's talk marketing. So um, this is a very important piece. <laughs> when you have your app, then the question, of course, is, well, what can you do with that is more effective than the other mediums of marketing. And uh, by the way, if we could just, you know, remember to, um, to mute ourselves, that'd be awesome. I really appreciate that. Um, and so uh, it, let's take email marketing as one of the most common ways that people go about marketing a message. Uh, of course, um, the common way is uh, people build their list. You know, they start emailing that list. They start marketing to their list. Um, well, in the mobile app world, the, um, the email equivalent 
is called a push notification. Okay, so if you don't know, uh, push notifications are the little messages that pop up on your phone and they're supposed to be really, really, really quick, right? It's, it's like a quick call to action that people can touch on um, that opens up the app when they click on it. So um, it's kind of like sending out a really short email, but it's coming in a pop-up with a quick call to action. Okay, so here's what's cool about that is um, the reason why people in with push notifications over email marketing is because uh, number one, email marketing, they're getting tons of emails. Like I woke up this morning and I think I had, um, I think I had 38 emails and one was important. 37 out of 38. <laughs> um, right. And then uh, the second reason is that most emails are really, really, really long. And even if it's a paragraph, a paragraph's considered long compared to push notifications. So with push notifications, you have to get really precise about what it is you want them to do. It's like, um, uh, check out this new video on 10 ways to lose weight or, um, or a new event happening soon in your area, register now. So whatever it is your message is trying to get them to do, uh, a push notification is a really simple yet powerful way of not interrupting a person's day where they have to figure out so, so hard to figure out just what it is you even want do which of course is the call to action you're trying to get them to take the call to, the do do the action you want them to do it's it's watch this video register for this webinar sign up for this call look at this thing read this article whatever it is it's all about the call to action okay um take notes this is good um uh, as well um another thing i want to add on to that is that when someone downloads your app on iphone um the very first time open up that app, it's going to ask if they want to receive push notifications from you. And so this is actually another key difference between email marketing and mobile marketing is that on average, 80% of people are going to say yes. And now um, saying yes to a push notification, it's, it's kind of like opting into your email list. Whereas as you may know, um, if you send a thousand people to your webpage to opt into your email list, um, you're going to get somewhere between 10, 15% of those people to opt in. Whereas if you get a thousand people to go ahead and download your app, um, you're going to get on average 70 to 80% of those people choosing to opt into push notifications. So right there, immediately we start to build a much larger connection. Okay. And then of course, as well, when I send out an email, like we talked about before, um, if you're getting like five or 7% engagement, you're actually doing really, really well. Um, what I mean by engagement, of course, is, um, uh, again, they, they click the call to action, the email, they go to your website, they experience whatever it is you want them to experience. Whereas when you send out a push, notif push notification through the, the phone, um, the, the on average of people clicking or touching on that push notification to send them over to your app to experience what you want them to experience is generally between 60 to 70%. So you go from a five to 7% engagement <laughs> to a 60 to 70% click through. So that's ultimately what you wanna do. And uh, uh, of course I can explain the reason behind that. The, the reason is that people don't have to go to their computer. They don't have to check their email address. They don't have to read a long, boring email. There's no spam folder. Um, and when they click, they don't have to go through whatever you know system you've all got set up. They basically just click that message and it takes them right over in the app and they experience what you want them to experience with just one tap. Okay, so engagement Matthew, from Matthew, yes, go ahead. Question from Hemant: What apps would you recommend for push notifications? Any APIs you would recommend? Um, if you're developing your own software, then I would suggest using OneSignal. OneSignal um, that you wouldn't really have to worry about most of the time unless you're building your own software. But yeah, one signal is cool if you're in the software industry. Um, yeah, um, as, as well as this though, as well as email marketing, of course, there's again, social media, which is, um, uh, as we talked about, when you post something like for free, like organically, um, it usually doesn't get very far. Uh, again, usually about 1% of your audience <laughs> ever sees anything. Um, and so often we find actually people um, paying to boost a post and you know, it costs you money, but um, the problem is you're still only getting a very small percentage of people actually clicking through. So um, here's an example 
of some Facebook ads I was running for um for one of my clients and we're crushing it. We were like like a three point one percent click through rate. Are you crazy in this niche? Like I laugh because it's it's really good. Um and it's nowhere near the seventy percent from the app or even the five to seven percent from email, which would be double, right? Um, and so this is why, of course, when people run ads or they put up posts, um, generally people's goal is to get that person on your mailing list. That's theoretically, theoretically, when they join your email list, you can engage with them for free. And um, this, as we've been talking about, doesn't always exactly work out like that because they might be on your mailing list but 95% of your emails are going straight to spam. Whereas on the other hand, when you invite somebody to download your app, um, where you now own that audience, a hundred percent of all people opted into push notifications are going to receive them. Okay. And it's going to cost you nothing to send out those notifications. Okay. So mobile app engagement from this standpoint is so, so, so powerful. Um, now, uh, the other thing about mobile apps uh, that's also cool is that the existing client support, as well as um, potential client, the existing client support is just taken to a whole other level as well. So if you have clients that you normally work with and you know you want to get them content, um, you normally have to put that content somewhere and, uh, and you have to send them that message and you know they have to click that and they have to go engage in that. Whereas with mobile apps, um, you can actually load up content for groups of people. Okay. So for example, um, if I had some online programs, uh, you know, um, my clients could access through a membership rather than setting up a tedious login system, but where let's be real here. No one remembers their password and certainly no one remembers the link where with mobile apps, um, you can actually create that red carpet experience for your clients where they can log in once and then they can access their membership forevermore. Okay. And of course, at least in my opinion, a happy client um, is a client that refers you. Right. And um, uh, I get a lot of traffic through referrals and it's, it's very nice. So um, I, I like to say whatever we can do to create a phenomenal experience for our clients is really, a, really, really important, at least to me. Um, now the, uh, the last thing that I'll say about, uh, about mobile apps that um, I think is also a question. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Uh, Apple iOS versus Android. Can one app work on both or are the, those two different apps? Good question. So, um, uh, uh, actually I was going to talk about that <laughs> in about, uh, not five minutes, but I'll explain the short version now. Um, basically they're separate platforms. They are separate platforms, meaning that they're coded differently, but they link up to the same, ecosystem. So um, at least with what we've done for our clients is um, when they change a page uh, for or a screen for their app, it'll reflect on both Android and Apple devices. So um, they are separate platforms, but they link up back to the same place. <laughs> um, cool. So um, uh, what was is, it, it, what I was saying was um, when it comes to getting uh, downloads of of apps. Um, something else that's cool when it comes to the marketing side of it uh, that I, I think is quite significantly different is, um, is that the accessibility of mobile apps is amplified in comparison to, to other things out there. And you can think of this like, uh, oh, I'll actually ask you a question. Um, what, just, you can just answer this in your own. Head. What's easier to get? What's easier to get? An Instagram follow or an email subscriber? What's easier to get, an Instagram follower or an email subscriber? Probably, your answer is, an Instagram follow is easier to get than an email subscriber. Now, why is that? Why is that? Well, the reason it's easier to get is because um, on uh, when it comes to Instagram, all they have to do to follow you is they just click one button like this. They just click one button and boom, they followed you. Whereas with email, it almost feels like they're giving up a part of themselves, right? I have to enter my email. This guy or gal is going to spam me with stuff, right? I don't even need this opt-in on the other side of this page. Um, and it makes people a lot more hesitant to, um, 
to to jump on that. So you can th- kind of think of mobile apps similar to Instagram, where um, uh, if you were to compare uh, email marketing and mobile app marketing, uh, the uh, the number of people and the accessibility of mobile apps is amplified by about ten. Okay, so getting a hundred thousand email subscribers is about the same work as getting a million in the app world. Um, so. As an example, with our Entrepreneur Success app that um, we're, we're releasing, our goal is actually to have a million people that have downloaded our app in the next 12 months, okay? So the thing is though, out of those million people, we then expect to have between 70 to 80% of those people opted into push notifications. And so when we send out an, a, a push notification to our entire app database, it's going out to seven or 800,000 people, okay? And for me to build like a seven, 800,000 person mailing list, that's almost impossible. Um, some of the best internet marketers who I know have nothing close to that size of the list. But see, in the mobile app world, um, you can do that sort of thing. And that's because the way mobile apps work and the marketing and the accessibility of it. So um, I like that about mobile apps. Uh, I love the fact that, you know, um, if I really want to change the world and, uh, and reach millions of people, you know, um, not tens of thousands of people, but you know, millions, um, then this is what I'm going to choose to do with my message. Now, um, very, very important. I mentioned I cover it. Uh, last but certainly not least, there's two questions that are very important that currently remain unanswered, which is, Number one, well, how do you monetize your app? Um, like, how do you make money with your app? Um, what are the different ways uh, you can monetize it? And then the second question is, well, how do you get downloads? Like, how do you get a lot of people going ahead and downloading your app? So um, let's go through some ideas around both of these. Well, uh, okay, we made it. <laughs> Interesting. Um, cool. So uh, the first thing I'll start off with is your app is a channel to the existing marketing systems that you currently have right now, okay? So if you have funnels that get people to a series of emails, that gets them engaged in your world um, and connecting with you, or, um, or if you do strategy calls, or if you have eBooks or products or programs or services, or you know, whatever it is you've got that is, uh, is designed to get people to connect, to engage in your content, um, your app, is designed to work alongside any systems you currently have right now and assist and assist in leading someone to ultimately choose to work with you. Okay. So all those are still in play. You're still going to have an email list. We're not throwing out the window quite yet. It's just that um, push notifications, push notifications are going to be a lot more effective than your email list. Okay. So if you've got an email list, fantastic. That's awesome. Um, you want to make sure that you've let all those people know to go ahead and download your app so that you can actually get more of them um, engaging more frequently than you can through actual email. Um, cool. So uh, let's talk funnels. So um, right now, if you've created a funnel where people opt in and they get some kind of ebook, video, PDF training, awesome. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're like, uh oh, <laughs> he's speaking some foreign language to me. <laughs> that's totally fine. That's all. That's cool. I love that. Um, funnels are basically this online internet marketing term that uh, it, it's kind of like a, it means a, a very effective way to lead people through a series of teachings or a series of content or um, different things where it's it's systematized to go page by page by page to have somebody end up purchase from you. So um, with the mobile app building software we've created, you'll actually be able to design your own custom funnels within the app. Okay. So um, in the app, you can share a video, you can share an article, um, an audio, and there can be an, and there can be a call to action bar that takes them deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into ultimately choosing to connect with you more, ultimately choosing to buy something, ultimately choosing to register for a call, whatever it is. And it can all happen right there inside your app. Okay. Um, and then uh, as well, even sales can be made for uh, certain products on mobile devices where they don't even need to enter their credit card. All they need to do is with one simple click, boom, with Apple pay or Google pay, they, they tap and you've made a sale. And um, uh, if you don't know exactly what this is, I'll explain it. Um, basically, 
uh, a lot of the newer devices, the newer iPhones, the newer a Android phones, um, they actually save credit card information on the phone. And what this allows us to do as marketers is when they click this checkout with Apple Pay or Google Pay button that you add, um, it will basically prompt them with one extra tap to bill your stuff. Um, so when you mix this in with a countdown clock to provide a bit of urgency, to provide a bit of scarcity, man, you can create some of the highest converting sales machines imaginable. Um, and again, of course, uh, this is something that you'll find is exclusive to mobile devices. Um, cool. So uh, let's talk getting downloads. So, um, Matthew, Matthew, I've got yes. two questions for you. I love it. Go ahead. Uh, how much does it cost for someone to drive traffic to your platform when they get their app for their business from you? How much does it cost to drive traffic? Well, like that's, if, I'm not sure specifically the, the, the specific question as different traffic sources cost different amounts. There's JV traffic, there's Facebook ads, there's Google ads, YouTube ads. Um, uh, it would vary depending on the platform and also depending on your niche and business and what you're selling uh, in terms of how much traffic it costs to drive if you're doing paid traffic. Okay. Um, the other question is, can you share some apps that are built using your app templates? I, I will. Yes. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> totally. A um, hundred percent. Thank you, Roger. Um, cool. Uh, so let's talk getting downloads. So um, more specifically, the first thing I'll talk about here is uh, affiliate marketing or, or joint venture partnerships. And um, I love this because see, this is where you can actually bring in guest experts as a phenomenal way of getting people to download your app. So of course the question is, well, how? Um, so uh, let's say my client Paula gets her app and, um, and Paula says, you know what? Um, I think Matthew, I think Matthew would be a great fit to come talk to my audience. And so um, Paula invites me to do a webinar, much like the one we're doing right now. And what she'll do is she'll take that video and she'll put it inside her app. Um, and she'll link off to my pro my product service, you know, whatever. Um, I'll give her an affiliate link so Paul can monetize that. Um, but see, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to email all my thousand people that I have access to, to go ahead and check out this video that I did with Paul and, you know, the awesomeness of Paul's world. And of course, do that simply by going to the app store and downloading her app. Okay. So by Paul inviting me to be a guest expert in her app, can lead to thousands of downloads of her app just through the promotion of the video that I did with her. And so um, this is a very, very, very powerful way of getting downloads, um, whether it's for apps or podcasts, um, anything like that it, it is a fantastic solution. Um, and then uh, of course, as well, there's social media. Um, so every time you post an article or a video um, in your app, what I suggest <laughs> What I suggest is that you don't repost that on Facebook or anywhere else. So instead, post a screenshot of, hey, I just created a brand new video training on XYZ. And instead of giving them that video training then and there, you say, it's available for free in my free app. <laughs> Okay. And you give them a link to download the app because see, that's what you want them to do is you want to drive them over to your own platform that you have control over rather than having them sit on Facebook or Pinterest or Instagram or, you know, whatever it is you use, TikTok. <laughs> um, so uh, these are some definitely uh, very effective ways of, of getting downloads. Um, and though uh, then uh, as well to elaborate on the question, i partially answered earlier. Um, as far as downloading your apps, uh, the app, um, the app's going to be on two separate platforms. So there's two app stores that are important for you to be on. There's the iPhone app store and the Android Google play store. Okay. And again, these are two completely separate platforms. Um, and these make up 99% of the world's smartphones. Okay. Um, and, uh, the other 1% are slowly dying. So it's iPhone or it's Android. So um, uh, here's a little neat thing though about iPhone and Android because um, a lot of people here in North America have iPhones. Um, number, uh, the number one best-selling phone in North America is the iPhone. Um, however, 
around the world, Android is actually the number one best-selling phone. So Android actually has 60% of the world's market. Uh, so a lot of people think, ah, uh, I'll just get my app for uh, uh, iPhone. I don't really need it for Android. Uh, it, um, most of my clients just use iPhone. And no, 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 no. You need it for both. <laughs> you need it for both. You <laughs> see, 60% of the world's phones are actually Android phones. Okay. So um, these are the two stores that people are going to find you on. Um, Cool. So um, at this time, uh, I want to show a little bit of a demo around uh, around what your app could look like. Um, <laughs> we've been sitting in suspense for like, oh, this is cool, but like, I want to see what exactly this looks like, right? So um, as we go into it, uh, uh, I'll mention uh, something you should generally be aware of are, is that there's two types of apps. Um, these are like classifications. They're not actual types, but the, I like to say there's, there's two types of apps that you can design. Um, there's resource apps, uh, and then there's apps that serve some kind of function, like a, kind of like a tool. So there's resource apps and there's apps that I call like tool apps. Um, and no one says you can't do both. You can absolutely do both all in one app. Um, and let me show you some examples on what I mean by this. Uh, it, it's just better through examples. So um, first up, is a, is a resource app. And um, a resource app, it, it, it's a type of app that, um, that's kind of like a go-to portal for your business or your community, okay? So um, this is where people can, you can offer all sorts of things that your audience is interested in. So um, uh, of course as well, uh, you can still keep them up to date daily or weekly through the push notifications as well. So um, on here, uh, on screen, you can see an example of uh, my client Kieran's app for her business, The Lady Lines. And um, uh, Kieran's got a cool business. I, I think it's awesome. Um, anyway, how the app functions is uh, she has different chapters. So she first has them choose their location. Um, and you can see the app navigation screen. And then on the right, uh, you can see where people can listen to her podcast directly in the app um, and can engage there. Uh, then there's the uh, access to her membership. They can learn about upcoming events. There's access to a library of mini courses. They can hop directly into virtual events. Um, and see, here's the secret thing. Here's the th secret thing that I want you to make a note of is that behind the scenes, everything going on here is designed to monetize Kieran's business, the Lady Alliance. Um, so uh, as an example, when they uh, uh, when they actually come and participate in the uh, either live events, the upcoming events, or the virtual events, obviously Kieran's going to sell them something, some package of hers for her stuff um, at those events. Then she has her library of mini courses where um, she structured her, she structures her courses where it goes um, introduction, content, offer essentially and in the offer she's making them uh the uh, she's giving them the opportunity to buy the next step the next step up the next course the next program the next thing um and as well even in the podcast at the end of each podcast episode she says if you need support book a call with me and my team right and so behind the scenes this app that's providing so much value for um her audience with the courses and the podcast and the membership and all this stuff um, is really uh, bringing in a lot of income behind the scenes. So again, this is the perfect resource for your clients to stay connected, learn more, grow more, engage more, and ultimately buy more. Okay. Um, now, uh, well, I, I'd say about 70% of my clients opt to create a, create a resource type app. Um, some of my clients have found very creative ways, <laughs> which I think are cool, uh, to design apps as more like a tool instead. So, um, Screen, you can actually see an example of one of my clients, David's app, uh, and David owns this, gotta just share real quick, um, this super cool business where he sells uh, Keurig pods, like Keurig coffee pods, um, but instead of selling coffee in them, uh, he fills them with tea. So he's got these tea pods, these tea Keurig pods, um, and rather than making his app all around tea, um, he's decided to make it around this uh, sort of well-off kind of mindfulness brand where People wake up, they choose their gratitude statement, they read off their mantra cards, it gives them um, some choices of who they're going to be today, it suggests some actions for them to do, and it's like, woohoo, if you did all your actions, there's a bit of gamification, it's like, good job. Um, however, again, behind the scenes, is that A, 
every now and then instead of fireworks and a little pat on the back, a handshake, woohoo, um, it's going to give them a coupon code to go to David's website and buy some more tea at 20% off. Um, and then the second thing is that he can send up push notifications anytime to all his users to say, hey, there's a, uh, uh, an amazing 24 hour special. Make sure you go to the website, type in the code, uh, you'll get 20% off um, uh, before, the, before the end of the night. So that gives him the flexibility to grow his business and serve his clients. Um, uh, another example is uh, of a tool as well is, uh, is an app my client Audrey created where um, she has people actually pick a card. Like uh, if, if anybody's into like angel cards or that sort of thing, it's kind of like that, um, uh, where people can pick a card and they get to see that message that's important to them. Um, and, uh, and what's important here is that while Audrey's app mainly functions as a tool, um, she is also in the process of adding videos and content to her app uh, and to just make it, you know, that much more engaging. So basically it functions as both a tool and a resource. Um, so again, you know, um, no one said you can't do both. You can absolutely do both. So uh, you can, your app can be anything you want, which is cool. Uh, this is your app done your way. Um, so uh, in addition to what I've just shown you, uh, I've also been working very, very, very closely with my development team to bring you the greatest opportunity I could possibly create when it comes to this. And uh, the fact is that uh, when I was going to the different development teams and they were like, do you have a budget? Like, like do you have a budget? Um, I, I simply said, I can't put a price on quality mixed with ease of use, mixed with next generation features. So in other words, this is an app creation platform, which is built by a marketer <laughs> who understands exactly what you need, okay? So um, you can see on screen, we've actually created a visual drag and drop style builder where you can build the exact app you want from the ground up. And when you submit off to the Apple uh, App Store, or the Android Google Play Store, you'll be able to update the pages within your app with just a couple of swift clicks, okay? So um, this world of mobile apps is so, so, so incredibly, incredibly powerful, um, really, if not the most powerful platform that you can use in your business today to generate that engagement and that connection for your clients and customers. Um, and so uh, there's many, many other things I could show you tonight um, with our technology that I, I wasn't even able to touch on. Um, and the fact is that uh, what I've just shared with you is just step one and two of this entire 12 step process, which are gonna be publicly available basically right away in August 1st. Um, and in fact, we're launching the first couple of apps this week, which I'm super, super, super excited about. Um, this whole July has been all about ironing out the last couple of kinks, the last couple of bugs, and we're ready to start creating people's apps right away this August, um, which I'm super, super, super excited about. Um, and of course, the other 10 mass of groundbreaking changes are coming your way in a very, very near future, which I haven't even remotely touched on yet. So the good news is that you can have your own custom app starting this August without it costing you 30 to 50 grand. Um, and so uh, if you're listening to this recording and you're curious about what a mobile app can do for you, you're not, you want to see if it's the right fit, um, be sure to go ahead and go over to 22apps.com forward slash VBN and schedule your app design call today. Uh, once again, that's 22apps.com slash VBN and we can chat about whether or not this is the right solution for you and your business. And I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Matthew, uh, Matthew on behalf of VBN, I thank you very, very much for sharing this, uh, this wisdom and this, uh, the, your incredible dual insights as an app developer and marketer uh, uh, with us. So again, thank you very much for everything you've done to support VBN members. Uh, 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 folks online, uh, don't, uh, don't go away.